Welcome to my latest YouTube video. By now, you should know that I am incredibly passionate about the topic of gaslighting. As I write in my book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, and talk about it in my um, live and uh, recorded seminars that are sold at selfloverecovery.com, gaslighting is an integral subject when you are trying to understand your codependency, or what I call self-love deficit disorder. It was about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I realized that gaslighting, the type of gaslighting that happens between SLDs, people who are self-love deficient or codependent, um, the type of gaslighting that occurs between SLDs and narcissists that occur in a relationship that is driven by the forces of the human magnet syndrome um, cannot happen, just cannot happen if you did not experience some form of gaslighting as a child with your narcissistic parent. This realization inspired me to write a whole chapter in my, my latest book, um, um, the latest version of the human magnet syndrome. A person who is gaslit by pathological narcissists is in a relationship with a type of narcissist that has sociopathic traits. And let me be clear about this, because I, I go through to great pains to explain that there are three categories of pathological narcissists. The one with narcissistic personality disorder, NPD, borderline personality disorder, BPD, or antisocial personality disorder, or ASPD. The people who gaslight others have sociopathic or ASPD traits or are sociopathic, which means if you are gaslit, it means that your partner, the perpetrator of the gaslighting, is either a sociopath, has ASPD, or a covert narcissist. Which is, a, which is a subcategory of narcissistic personality disorder in which they are aware of their narcissism, they hide it from others, and they project and present a normal, likable, caring, loving, and respecting facade. So I, I start this discussion with a reminder that we are not just dealing with garden variety NPDs, people with narcissistic personality disorder. We're dealing with people that have sociopathic traits. And as a reminder, a sociopath or someone with ASPD lacks empathy, is unable to have remorse, and can hurt people and justify the hurt because it makes, they're getting what they want. They're, get, they're fulfilling their needs. And if it hurts someone else, they don't experience what we call cognitive dissonance. They don't experience that anxiety and the, the, the jumble of feelings and thoughts that make us go, is this right? Is this wrong? Should I do this? But this and that. They don't have that internal fight. They so cleanly and so easily justify their harm because it's always in about them. Their needs supersede the impact of the harm that they perpetrate on others. They're unable to experience remorse or feel bad for what they do. First is they don't have empathy. They don't know or want to know what it feels like to be harmed by them. They don't have the capacity to um, connect to another's feelings when somehow the feelings that were evoked or created are caused by them. Empathy clearly is just the ability to understand what another pe person feels like or to, or to get them to, to walk in their shoes. The gaslighting narcissist, the sociopath or the, uh, or the covert narcissist doesn't care about how you feel unless somehow your feelings can be manipulated and reshaped into something that can help them out. So I start this video with just a reminder that one, 
is if you are an SLD or a codependent um, and you are gaslit or in a relationship that it, uh, in which your partner controls you through gaslighting, it means that in your childhood you experienced a form of gaslighting as a child. Your relationship with your narcissistic parent shaped you to be um, a child that would accept someone else's explanation for your reality. You could not have survived your childhood with your pathological narcissist if somehow you were not able to accept their inculcated reality narrative, accept the implanted narrative of who you are as the child and who they are as a narcissist. When they can make you feel that you are lovable by being invisible, you are lovable when you are the good child, the handsome child, the pretty child, the child that doesn't ask for anything. When you identify with being the invisible child, you make the narcissist happy, your reality gets construed into a narrative that never was you. And once you fully accept this reality, this narrative, this implanted narrative, you get the love, the conditional love of the pathological narcissist. And that's the best you can do during these critical attachment, this critical attachment phase of your childhood. So to understand the origins of SLDD, self-love deficit disorder, aka codependency, we have to understand the attachment trauma. And I've explained this on many of my videos that SLDD is caused by trauma, core shame, pathological loneliness, SLDD or codependency addiction, and of course on top of the pyramid is the problem that we know as SLDD or codependency. But to understand why we are SLDs, we, we have to embrace the fact that we endured terrible attachment trauma, but we adapted to it and survived it, unlike our siblings who, who are more, than, more likely than, than not to be pathological narcissists. Somehow we were able to mold ourselves into the trophy child and the version of the type of child that would make this narcissistic parent love us more and in dire and sad situations hurt us less. And, and that's the developmental crossroad that separates the person who's going to become an SLD as an adult or a narcissist. If you can figure out a way to reshape yourself into the type of child that will make the narcissist feel good about themselves, you will get something from them you will become the trophy, the likable child, the good child. And you won't suffer the horrible harm, the neglect, the abuse, the abandonment of the child who cannot regulate themselves, cannot um, disassociate their needs, cannot be the trophy child. And that, that is the fate of the child who is perpetually and always the bad child. You, the SLD who became gaslit by your adult SL, I mean, you as the adult SLD who has been gaslit by your partner, um, you were primed, you were set up for gaslighting so early. It's almost as if the narcissist, when they first met you, and in, for many of you guys, you'll know in my book, in chapter, I think it's chapter two, where I talk about the, the exciting but terrible tango, which is the, the original idea that created my human magnet syndrome books, is the dance. The dance that brings the codependent, the SLD and the narcissist together is this feeling of familiarity, this feeling of attraction, this chemistry, the human magnet syndrome. It's like you know each other you're familiar, you, f you feel paradoxically safe with the person that feels familiar. 
the narcissist can smell, they can sense the codependent traits. It was because that those traits of yours make them feel more comfortable. They make them feel less anxious. They make them feel like there's less of a probability of being abandoned or neglected or disregarded. Narcissists are not attracted to people that are going to not like them because they will have a narcissistic injury, so they have to find someone that fits their opposite profile. And that's the whole thesis of the human magnet syndrome. I'm not going to go into that now. I've got plenty of stuff on YouTube, got my book, got all sorts of videos. But there was one video I made, and I believe the title was um, Narcissists Are Like Pedophiles. Now, of course, I like strong titles because, you know, that's good marketing. But the point of that and bringing that up is a narcissist who is a sociopath or a covert narcissist who is going to gaslight you. They need to find a certain type of SLD who is vulnerable and, cap and capable of having their mind manipulated. And going back to the one video of the, the you know, narcissists are like pedophiles, et cetera, et cetera. It's like they can find, they can be among a group of people and say there's two or three people that are on the SLD side, but only one, the one, their target is going to be the one that they believe can be gaslit. They can smell it. They can sense it. They can intuit the type of person that is going to be open into having their reality manipulated in a way so that they can accept another person's reality, which in turn will um, create uh, power and control dynamics that will, um, and will ultimately, they will become this indentured servant-like person to them. And the person that's going to fall for this, the person that's going to be their target their victim is the one that experienced severe gaslighting as a child during their developmental attachment phase. And that goes back to what I said earlier. The gaslighting process that occurs between the two adults, the nurse, pathological narcissist and the SLD, the codependent, requires that the SLD to have an experience and to and susceptibility in gaslighting. So why is this important? Why am I saying to understand gaslighting and to protect yourself about gaslighting, you have to understand that you were set up as a child early on to know that love to be loved and cared for, to be respected, you have to abandon your own thoughts, ideas about yourself, your narrative, your story for yourself, accept someone else's story, narrative, get manipulated in a way to actually believe something that isn't true, that is true, and then act it out and become that person. It's because of what happened to you so long ago, that trauma you're carrying. You have a little child inside of you. Every SLD has a little child inside of you, them, and I call that their inner trauma child. And that child has been disconnected, disassociated from them. You actually can't remember her or him because that is the nature of trauma. The brain encapsulates it it puts it, it hermetically seals it and puts it away so you don't have to remember it because to remember it, you would remember the anguish and the pain of a childhood in which you had to be, you had to suspend your own ideas, your own feelings, your own perceptions for someone else's in order to guarantee yourself to be loved. You cannot break free from gas lighting as an adult adult just by sheer willpower, just by sheer psych, uh, um, um, uh, 
motivation or, 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 or commitment to psychotherapy because the roots of the problem go so much deeper than what's happening right now. The roots go all the way back into your childhood to a part of your childhood that you actually cannot recollect. I am creating a training and will be, and, and this information that I'm talking about now will be a part of this training that I'm giving um, that will be available on video in about, uh, well, the training is in July 15th, 2019, and it will be available on video um, at the end of July. Um, I am writing um, and creating information for you guys so you could understand that if you're going to heal from the cause of SLDD, attachment trauma, is to know that you cannot get to that information by normal and regular memory processes. Now, I might have triggered a memory of you being as a child having your thoughts and your feelings and your explanations for the world manipulated, but I promise you, that if you are an SLD and you've been gaslit or you're being gaslit, there's a little child inside of you who you might not know exists. And that's the child that you were that was hurt, abused, manipulated, and afraid that she would never be loved if she couldn't and wouldn't take on the reality of someone else and toss aside her own. Your hope for recovery what I call the codependency cure or self-love recovery absolutely necessitates your acquaintance with your hurt inner trauma child. She, he, has this story to tell you. Now, it will be very difficult to put, to get her, and we'll say her because, you know, everyone who knows me knows that SLD, um, shows no preference to men or women, but we'll say her. This little girl, this trauma child, she's invisible. But she wants to talk. And she wants to tell you her story. She wants to be let out of that dungeon that is in the deepest recesses of your mind, which actually is in a specific place. And in my training, I will talk about how attachment trauma and other trauma is actually encapsulated and put into another part of your brain. This, um, we call it a limbic system, specifically an almond size shaped part of your brain called the amygdala. But that's beyond the scope of this. But that little girl, that inner trauma child, she was so deeply hurt and gaslit that she had to disappear. You're watching this video and you're having feelings. I'm suspecting you're having feelings in your body. And I call these body memories. And that's part of my new material that's going to be in my upcoming training. Um, and information about that will be um, in, in, the, um, in the description of this video. But these body memories, that is the doorway into the trauma you can't remember. Maybe you got a backache. Maybe you got, maybe you get nauseous. Maybe you're feeling really tense now. That's her. She's talking to you. She's telling you that she is connecting to this information. And she has been buried, buried, buried deep inside the back of your mind to a place where she can't be recalled because it's too dangerous. That little girl, that little boy, was gaslit so that she disappeared. Your hope, your salvation for self-love, self-love recovery, is to connect to that little girl, to understand what that she had to disappear, and the process of accepting someone's narrative, someone's story for her, to be gaslit, was how and why she disappeared. So I could not recommend any more strongly the necessity to find a therapist who understands trauma 
who understands the unconscious, the, the disassociated elements of trauma so that they can help you find that little girl, that little boy. Give him a voice. Help him rediscover that who she is is not who she has accepted. That somewhere along the line, her real self had to disappear. And if you can really connect to that little girl, that little boy, I promise you, you will understand, overcome, and he heal the trauma wounds that keep you tethered to your pathological narcissist in this human magnet driven relationship. I promise you that. And until you have that type of therapy, um, trust your body. Your body is the voice of the child. Your stomach, your neck, your heart. Because you won't have the memories. They're not meant to come back to you unless you're in a safe place with a, a therapist who understands trauma. But her voice will talk to you with your body. And we are going to, one step at a time, help you get strong enough, resilient enough, courageous enough to understand that your adult gaslighting, the fact that someone did what I call the, the, the swapping the photo on the mirror trick, all, and this is in my book, um, The Human Magnet Syndrome, but basically, if you're not gaslit, Someone will hold up a mirror to you, and, you'll, and they'll say, look at you. I love you because you are that. And the mirror reflects everything you see. And you'll see a person that you love because you have self-love abundance, which is the opposite of self-love deficit disorder. It is the goal of self-love recovery, that the healing trauma psychotherapy work that I do, the cure, solve, SLDD or codependency self-love abundance. But if you're an SLD, you will see something, you won't see a mirror, you will see the metaphorical photo that the narcissist put on there, and that photo is what they want you to see so that you can identify that as you. And it will be a broken, twisted, insecure, um, sad, afraid, easily abandoned child. So that Swapping the photo on the mirror trick creates this belief that what you see is you, and it's not. And in this type of therapy and treatment that I will be talking about in detail in my upcoming training on healing the inner trauma child, again, information will be in the description, will help you understand the way out, the solution. Because you don't have to be that picture anymore. We need to peel that that picture off the mirror and and you'll be afraid we'll have to do it carefully and you're gonna see this beautiful little girl this boy who was always perfect the eyes and the smile and the innocence you'll see yourself you will see what you always should have been a person who is worthy of self-love who needs self-love who can't do anything other than love themselves because with that foundation of self-love and the healing of the trauma and the resolution of that poor child's gaslighting and attachment trauma, you will have a chance to finally experience your birthright of happiness, security, and self-love. And any perpetrating narcissist who wants to put a photo on your mirror and say, hey, that's you, and you deserve this or don't deserve that, you will reject. And the human magnet syndrome changes. You will be driven away from them instinctively. You will have what I call your narsometer, your internal intuitive warning system will say danger. That's the new human magnet syndrome of a healed, self-loving person. In conclusion, I want you to put down this mirror that has 
somewhat swap that photo and put it down and understand that you are a you are a victim of severe gaslighting from which all of your perceptions about yourself and beliefs have been distorted so you can be the type of person the narcissist needs you to be that believes there's no way out and to solve this you have to find a therapist who can trace back the developmental pathway that will lead you to that hurt inner trauma child who has disappeared who you can't even remember but she's there because she was gaslit so badly that her whole life was her um, her pure and innocent perceptions of the world were stolen so that she can get the little bit of love from the narcissist you can do it I believe you can do it and self-love abundance is the cure so thank you for watching my video and I hope it helps you to heal and solve the problem that keeps you perpetually attracted to narcissists and entrapped, especially to the gaslighting people who, who will take everything away from you in order to, they're like parasites. They, they live off of, a parasite lives off the host organism. They need you to disappear for them to feel good about themselves. So best of luck and be well. Bye-bye.